Um, so I'm uh, the co-founder of a, a blockchain-based startup called Horizon State. Um, we're settled um, in Melbourne, Australia primarily. We have some team members uh, in New Zealand. And what we're hoping to do right now is commercialize and go international uh, with uh, development teams and a sales force around the globe. We exist to answer uh, one question. It's a, it's a profound question, which is, what would democracy look like uh, if the founders of our nations um, and our companies um, did so with the technology that was available to us today? Uh, I don't think that they would tell us that we should be voting on a package of policies every, uh, every few years. I don't think that they would get us to go to a, a centralized location and uh, mark something on paper and drop it into a, a ballot box. Um, as most of you are probably aware, there's lots and lots of problems with our traditional voting systems. Um, I'll give you one example, which is that in Australia, we're running a postal vote right now. It's costing the taxpayer $122 million to facil facilitate this postal vote. It takes about three months. Utilizing blockchain technology, uh, the equation changes dramatically. Um, I think the nicest way to describe uh, the stark difference between uh, where we are in regards to voting and democratic processes and the rest of our world is that, quite simply, we're on the verge of uh, driverless cars being a reality, yet, quite literally, uh, the way we conduct ourselves and organize society uh, and govern our companies and, and nations is uh, the equivalent of a horse and cart. So some of these um, problems that exist with the traditional systems um, are obviously cost. That, uh, that Australian postal vote is costing in the vicinity of $8 uh, per active voter. And this price just goes up for national elections all around the world. Uh, you know, the UK spends 80, 90 uh, million pounds. In the US, it's uh, in the vicinity of three and 400 million. The other issue is one, the one I alluded to just earlier, which is the geographically centralized methods of participation uh, are not only slow to orchestrate, but they actually introduce voter apathy. We know that uh, millennials that, with, that live further away from ballot boxes uh, are actually statistically less likely to vote. Um, now in Australia, it's compulsory, so you also get fined. We also have um, the reality, and for those of you who have been paying attention to uh, any news out of the US, um, the voting machines that have been used in elections historically in the US, the, the electronic ones, um, are relatively easy um, compromised. In the time it takes you to vote, you're actually able to um, create fraudulent votes and or adjust the record. So utilizing blockchain technology and uh, various other components of the platform that we uh, have developed an MVP for uh, and are currently expanding upon is A, first and foremost, the most important thing is the tamper-proof ballot box. So the post-unforgeable integrity characteristics of the blockchain mean that once the vote is cast, it is literally cast, uh, and it shares the same qualities that any cryptocurrency transaction does in that respect. We reduce voter apathy uh, by creating interfaces and providing SDKs and APIs for the creation of uh, other interfaces with parties and, and uh, development networks so that we can have people cast their votes from their personal devices. Now, in developing nations, this can still be a challenge. Um, only about 450 million of the 1.5 billion in India uh, have smart devices at this stage, but it's rapidly increasing. In developed nations, it's um, already a lot easier. About 95% of uh, Australians have a mobile phone, 85% a smartphone, uh, and again, that's increasing every day, with almost 100% um, of the population having access to some kind of computer, even if that's a library, to access the internet. And we're talking about significant savings as well. So. Uh, what might cost seven or eight dollars in a traditional system, with ours, more like 50 cents. Uh, probably a lot less, to be honest, and that includes sunk costs, uh, product iteration, and so forth. So, as I said earlier, this isn't, um, this isn't just a pipe dream, it's something that we've been working on for a while. It was something born out of a not-for-profit democratic movement in Australia called MyVote. Um, and we've had uh, an MVP, a prototype. It's, it's being used by the public. It looks polished, um, but there's a lot more work to do. Um, but we've been casting votes to the blockchain for my vote uh, since February. They've run four national votes in the country. Now, this isn't really a fair comparison, but sometimes unfair comparisons are the most important ones. We've got a traditional ballot box, which is uh, centralized, and it is open to all kinds of problems uh, in respect to, to fraud and uh, efficiency. We've got current online ballot boxes uh, in the form of standard databases, such as SQL, which are obviously centralized. Uh, even if they're on a cloud network, you're talking about a replication of a single point, uh, and so you know, there are security vulnerabilities there to consider. 
And what we're talking about with our token uh, is effectively a distributed and secure ballot box uh, for the first time ever made uh, possible by the blockchain. Now, obviously, I've been talking about electoral voting primarily because it's the most obvious use case. But there are lots of other use cases for this kind of voting technology. Wherever there is a democratic process where the vote needs to be secure, um, we're able to facilitate that. So a few examples, uh, and this is kind of one right here in regards to the ICO pitch competition. There is a lot of money at stake. So the vote, um, you know, the security of the vote is, is pretty important. So utilizing a system like this would also help. To talk a little bit about the decision token ecosystem, HST is effectively used to pay the fees uh, from governments, uh, global NGOs, uh, other multinational institutions uh, to pay for the fees in respect to committing that vote to the blockchain. Um, they'll be buying tokens from the free market, um, and obviously with additional demand uh, comes uh, higher token prices. As I said earlier as well, we have the opportunity for customers not only to use our interfaces or our white-labeled solutions, but utilize our SDK and our API um, so they can create their own interfaces. We're also looking at uh, expanding in the very near future the feature set. My vote uh, have requested uh, a campaign fundraising mechanism which we'll be delivering through, um, delivering through the platform as well. Just a little bit, a little bit on the team, just quickly. Um, pretty proud of the team we've got together. Uh, we, we've got uh, executives with a combined uh, experience of hundreds of years in, in leadership and management, um, and even more impressive than the team itself, I think, is, is the help we've acquired to help us make this a success. Some of you know Calvin Gabriel um, has in the past managed funds in excess of one billion. Um, we have Uber's head of marketing and innovation. We have uh, Daniel Gastiger, who is um, a blockchain advisor to the state of Zurich and the United Nations. Um, some of you know Jane Thomason as well. She's a leader for Blockchain for Good um, and is very keen on exploring how this can help uh, developing nations. So we go to pre-sale this month. Our smart contract is currently in the final stages of audit. Um, and if you would like to participate in that pre-sale, um, if you head to horizonstate.com slash whitelist, you'll be able to uh, add your Ethereum deposit address there. And obviously, there is a discount in respect to this pre-sale as well. So all in all, um, it's pretty exciting. I think it's been a privilege personally to work on a product that is not only really cool tech, but that I believe can have a, a fundamental and profound impact on the way that society organizes itself um, in securing that vote and helping us make sure that uh, we deliver equality and justice uh, wherever these democratic uh, processes exist. Um, thank you. Do you have any competitors on the market, like EGAS, uh, some, some other projects? We do, yeah. So there's, uh, there's Democracy Earth, who are working on a similar kind of platform. Uh, there's also Vote M, which is not blockchain-based. Uh, and there's another uh, ICO currently underway called Boule. Um, so we're not alone in this space, um, but with the track record we've got and the team we put together, and some of the uh, fa fantastic uh, partnerships we've already developed, we believe that we have quite a significant edge. Uh, this will be the first time that I've announced it, which is that as of yesterday, we've just formalized our partnership with SAP. Uh, so they're listed on our website now um, as, a, as a partner. I'm going to be working with them very closely. Um, we're also in talks with the United Nations. I'm off to the UN to talk to them um, in New York on Wednesday. And we are also presenting with the UN at a Singaporean conference that they've organized. Um, there is great interest from them to be endorsing our platform as a part of their uh, blockchain for good. And we're also talking with a, a global NGO about utilizing our platform uh, to facilitate the votes in, in respect to conservation efforts for their 5 million members around the world. So in terms of opportunity from a customer base and a, and a partner uh, and, and, and partnerships, we are, we're ahead of the pack. Uh, what about the identification of personalities of people who are going to vote? So Probably this will change. You, yeah, you, you're going to have some the ones that reached adolescence or... Uh, yeah. yeah. So this will change jurisdiction to jurisdiction, country to country, company to company. With the enterprises that we're working with, uh, it's relatively straightforward because they usually, usually have some kind of mechanism for uh, eligibility and authentication, which effectively we plug and play. Uh, for, for countries, it gets a little bit trickier. But as an example, in, the, in, in Australia, we have the Australian Electoral Commission who provide that eligibility record for our utilization. And then it's really just a matter of identity uh, and utilizing mechanisms uh, to make sure that we, uh, we get as close to one vote, one person as possible. But it's also important to remember here that 
any improvement is a, is a good one because the reality right now, even in Australia, uh, living up in Brisbane for five years, it was a matter of me walking into a polling booth, pointing at my name, them ticking it off and me and going to vote. So, you know, th there's, uh, there's certainly a lot of room for improvement in that regard. Thank you. Cool. We are actually out of time. Thank, Thank you, you so much.